Hello, I'm Landon Schlungen, and today we're going to go through the SAS challenges. What SAS is, is it's basically CSS on steroids. It makes it easier for us to write our CSS. And there's only nine of these challenges, so it should be pretty quick. Let's uh, go to the first lesson. Store data with SAS variables. So to, to declare a variable with SAS, you do dollar sign and then the name of it. So for this challenge, we want to have a variable called text color, and we want to set that to red. And then we want to use it in our blog post and our H2. So instead of color red here, we're going to do color dollar sign text color, and it should stay red. And that should work. Let's try it. All right. For some reason, it didn't work. It timed out, which is weird. Uh, let's try again, I guess. Okay. That Okay. That was weird. Nest CSS with SAS. So normally with CSS, you have to do nav UL to like get inside the nav and grab the UL or do nav UL LI to grab the LI that's inside the UL that's inside the nav. But with SAS, you can do it with nesting like this, which is cleaner and it's easier to understand. So for this challenge, we want to take our P and our H1 styles and we want to put them inside of our blog post class. And it should work exactly like before, except now we know that H1 and P are inside that class or inside that div with class blog post. So let's try that out. Yep. Create reusable CSS with mixins. Mixins are SAS's way of doing functions. And basically to declare it, we do at mixin and then the name of the function and then we can pass our variables into it and then we can do styles based on that. So for this challenge, we want to mix in for our border radius. So we're gonna do at mix in border radius. That's the name of it. And it's gonna have a dollar sign radius as its parameter. And then we're gonna set our border radius to that radius that's passed in. And then in our awesome, we're gonna do our at include. So that's how we actually use it. We do at include and then our mix in. So we'll do at include border radius and then we'll pass in our 15 pixels that we want. And there, now our element is curved on the border. So that should be good to go. Let's try it out. Uh, nope. I have to add in all the other ones for the different browsers. So we have to do WebKit border radius. We want the Mozilla one and the MS one as well. Okay, there we go. We got our WebKit, Mozilla, and Microsoft one or MS. I'm not really sure what they all stand for because most of the time nowadays we can just do this one and it should work for pretty much all browsers. But yeah, let's uh, move on now. It timed out again. Uh, let's try it again. Not really sure why it's timing out. Let's just try it again, I guess. No, try it again. I'll try copying this and resetting it and then redoing it and then trying it. Okay, there we go. So I guess if that happens, just reset it and do it again. Use at if and at else to add logic to your styles. So at if and at else are like if and else in JavaScript and they're used with mixins so that we can pass in a variable or pass in a parameter and it can determine what style to give based on that parameter. So in this case, if value was danger, then the color would be red or if it was alert, then it would be yellow. For our challenge, we want a mixin called border stroke. So do at mixin border stroke and it'll take a parameter called val and and then we'll do our if, else, if, and else for our light, medium, heavy. So we'll add if, if val equals light, then we want our border to be one pixel solid black. Else if our val is medium, then we want it to be three pixel solid black. Else if value is heavy, we want it to be six pixel solid black. And then we'll do at else at the end, we want our border to be none. And right here we're saying medium, so it's this one. If we did light, then the border is one pixel. If we don't have anything, I guess it does need something. So we'll do something here and it should be none now. Let's try heavy. So there's our heavy border and we should be good to go. Let's try it. Yep. Use at four to create a SAS loop. So the at four is a lot like the JavaScript four loop and it's useful for making classes really quickly. So in this example, they're creating 12 column classes that have a different set of width. For our challenge, we want to make a five classes called text one to through two five or through five. So I'll start with our four at four. And then looking at this, I guess I'll just copy it over because why not? We want to do one through six or one, two, six. So we'll go one, two, six here. And then we want it to be text so I'll go text here. And then what we want, we want our font size set to 15 pixels times the index. So I'll go font size here, and then we'll go 15 times our index. And there we can see our hello gets bigger and bigger, the, the bigger the text class we give it. And we should be good to go with that. 
Let's try it out. Yep, use at each to map over items in a list. In this example, they have three items in this list and they're mapping over each one and they're setting the classes, like they're making new classes, called blue text, red text, and green text. And they're giving them the color of blue, red, and green. So it's basically just making this, except by doing it with just three lines. For our challenge, we want a at each directive that goes through blue, black, and red that makes a class called blue background, black BG, and red BG, and it gives it the background color of that color. So we'll go at each, and then we'll name it. So we want our color in, our colors of blue, black, and red. So blue, black, red. And then we'll open it up with brackets, and we'll give our class so dot hashtag bracket dollar sign color to grab that color. And then it will append BG onto the end of that. And then what is that class gonna have? It's gonna have the color, the background color of that color. So dollar sign color. And there we have our color showing up from these divs. We can also do it like this, but I chose to stick with this way. So let's try this out. And we're timing out again. So I guess I'll copy this and reset it and try it again and try it out. Okay, there we go. Apply a style until a condition is met with at while. So we can use at while instead of at for if we want to make our cla different classes. So we're trying to do exactly what we did in one of our other challenges, except by using our at while. So we'll start with our at while and then we'll have our dollar sign x. It'll be less than six and we'll start it at one. So we'll start dollar sign x equal to one up here. We'll open this while loop up and we'll have our class of text dash hashtag brackets and then we'll put our dollar sign x in here so that'll make our classes of text one through five and what do we have want to have in there we want our font size to be 15 pixels or 15 times our dollar sign x and then we want to set our x to x plus one and there's our different font sizes i guess i don't need to add pixels onto this although i thought i might of needed to. What happens if I do add pixel here? I guess it works the same way. So let's try this out. Yep, cool. Split your styles into smaller chunks with partials. SAS partials are small segments of CSS that can be used in other files and we can import them by doing at import and then our partial which is named variables.scss or actually we need to put our apostrophes around it. So I guess this is the way we do it. So I'll get rid of the underscore and the s.scss at the end and just do the apostrophes. And I'll spell variables right. I think that's what we're supposed to do. Let's try it. Yep, okay, cool. Extend one set of CSS styles to another element. Here we have a class of dot panel with background color, height, and border. And we want to have a big panel class that takes all of these properties from panel but it has some other properties added onto it. So in this case, we use the at extend directive to grab the panel. So now big panel has all of these plus width and font size added onto it. So for our challenge, we want to have a info important class that extends our dot info. So this class right here, and then it also has a background color of magenta and it's timing out again. So I guess I'll try and fix that quick. And there are background colors magenta and we're extending the info class. Let's try it out. Yep. And there we go. We completed all the SAS challenges. Next up, we're going to do React. And React is definitely my favorite part of web development. And I'm super excited for this. I love using React. I've been using it for about a year now. So yeah, this should be fun to go through. And hopefully I explain things really well because it's definitely very, very useful. And I would definitely recommend learning React before Angular or before Vue, just because that's the way I learned. I learned React before those two frameworks as well. And hopefully Free Code Camp does a pretty decent job of going through it with us. I built my website using React, so that was something too. And I've done multiple projects with it. It's a great framework. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed going through the SaaS challenges and I will see you next time. Bye.